here's the transport for the day on top of the world's most confusing car park, but I found it. So it's 9am, I'm on the top of a multi-storey car park in Dundee, I've just found my hire car for the day, my, uh, my lovely little BMW. Um, yeah, basically the plan for today is to go out and do a bit of exploring, both to find some good places to fly my drone, and also, yeah, just to um, appreciate some of the history of this place and maybe find out a bit more about it. So, yeah, let's get going. All that lay between me and the open road was 12 floors of car park. At which point I discovered why balancing a GoPro on the dashboard isn't a good filming technique. So I pulled over into a nearby car park to reset the camera and have another go. Which lasted until I reached the traffic lights pulling out of the car park. So I gave up on that plan for now and headed to my first destination, the town of Wormit just across the river from Dundee. I parked up outside the local blacksmiths and went for a wander to see what I could find. My goal was the magnificent Tay Rail Bridge which opened in 1887. I was hoping to get some good shots of the structure, however I immediately ran into a problem. You know, on, on Google Maps that is open, but they've obviously decided they don't want you going down there so they've put a new gate in. So we're not going to be able to go down there, we're going to find somewhere else to do this. But I did find a handy set of steps that took me up to the end of the bridge so I could get this photo. I would have given up at this point, but fortunately while driving through the town I happened to spot this sign to a public foreshore, which I decided to investigate. Have to admit this alleyway didn't look very promising, and I probably wouldn't have dared to wander down here if the signage hadn't been very clear about this being a public footpath. But I'm glad I did, as it brought me right out on the waterfront with this amazing view of the bridge, and since the tide was out, I could wander down onto the beach and unpack the drone. The original Tay Rail Bridge opened in 1878 during the railway boom of the late 19th century when the North British Railway Company decided to undercut their rivals on the lucrative Edinburgh to Dundee route by going direct. The reason no one else had attempted this was the two large estuaries that were in the way and needed enormous bridges to cross. Quite famously, the original Tay Bridge collapsed during a storm shortly after opening, and a replacement bridge was built to a different design. You can still see the remains of the old bridge next to the new one, and the disaster served as a case study for civil engineers, and the inspiration for a notoriously terrible poem by William McGonagall. I would have loved to have got more footage of the bridge, but I couldn't get much closer than this because I'm actually really close to the boundary of the no-fly zone for Dundee Airport and decided it probably wasn't best to push my luck. So, sit rep, um, there's the bridge. Yeah, I think, I'm glad I got to see that. It was an interesting way to see the bridge. Um, I mean, I'll admit, I probably didn't really take full advantage of that location because, yeah, I was just so aware that I was right on the edge of the no-fly zone and there were some aircraft flying up and down the river. Um, yeah, so I just, I was being very cautious about where I flew, so I'll be interested to see what the footage comes out as, but, yeah, acknowledging I'm probably not going to be the most spectacular footage which is a shame because it's an amazing bridge it just yeah you can't fly a drone near it because it's near the airport basically um maybe if i've got time later in the day i'll try and get some photos of the other end of the bridge over in dundee um when i'm taking the car back we'll see what i can do uh but in the meantime my next planned stop is going to be queen Surrey over on the fourth which is about 40 miles away and my car is telling me 80 miles of range. I thought that 139 in the top was the range, but nope, that is the, um, that's how far it thinks it's gone. I can't reset the trip counter. So yes, current range is 80 miles. So I think I can get there. I'm going to have to find a charging point at some point to try and charge this up. Um, on the other hand, I have fixed the GoPro problem. I've found a way to mount my head mount thing for my GoPro on the screen. So hopefully we can film some of this and it'll be a nice pretty time lapse of all the driving. So I think I'm still slightly nervous that I've not got enough charge to get there and back, so I'm going to have to find somewhere to charge the car when I get there, but I think I can do this. Look at that. 
without you. I could have asked for a better parking spot. So that's the the old the the obviously the old 1960s uh, fourth road bridge in front and then the new Queen's Ferry crossing replacement behind it. Basically the one the old suspension bridge was deteriorating faster than expected because it was taking more traffic than expected. So they had to build a replacement to take the motorway, which is what the bridge in the background is. And that's now sort of the world's most spectacular bus lane, pretty much. It's a public transport link, it's amazing. Um, you can hear the rumbling from above us. We're basically parked under the pay bridge. You can see that there. Somebody else over there enjoying the view. So yes, um, under the rail bridge, which I'm hopefully gonna go and film in a sec. Um, good news on the car, the range is all right. It's actually reckoned we've still got about 55 miles left on it, which is pretty good. Um, I noticed it went up again when we started going down. I think it was drugs drove up and over and then down to get to sea level. And as soon as it started going downhill, the range jumped up. So, still think I'm going to try and charge this, but the good news, if I can't charge it, I think I've got enough to limp back to Dundee on the 25% left in the car. But, or I'm going to regret saying that later. Let's see what happens. Oh, that was fun. So, I think I probably did about... I think it was about 15, 20 minute flight with the drone. Um, I used up pretty much all of one battery. I think it was just going to start warning me the battery was getting low when I came into land. But I thought I wasn't going to be able to fly here because I originally I'd aimed to fly just over there where there's like um, the park goes right under the bridge. And I thought that would have been amazing to get some really cool up close shots of the bridge. But um, basically they're doing renovation work. You can see it up there. That's making a lot of noise by the way. That's you can't really hear it in the car, but I was making such a horrific racket they're making on the bridge. But um, So yeah, basically the point over there is all fenced off construction site and there, there wasn't really any suitable place to fly the drone. So I was feeling a bit disappointed initially thinking, oh, you know, I've come here to do drone flying and then I can't. But then I went for a bit of a wander anyway and found just over there, you can see it up here actually, that little bit of harbour where the... No, hello, nice network rail person. Um, that was a perfect place to, um, I was able to sort of go down there and stand out the way and fly the drone around a bit. That was quite a good, uh, quite a good little session. I wish I'd been, I wish I'd been able to be a bit braver with the drone. I, I think a lot of the shots of the bridge I'm going to have a looking up at it because I think every time I tried to get the drone up a bit higher, something always made me a bit nervous. Like, I think there's one point I was getting quite, I've, I've been interested how this turns out, but there's one point where I was getting quite a good shot of the, a train going over the bridge and at that point like a seagull came and didn't actually attack the drone but kind of started flying at it so it's a learning experience well they came here and it's just been great to spend a yeah, half an hour here just enjoying these amazing bits of engineering we've got around us so yeah the car reckons it's got 57 miles left on it which is enough to get me back to dundee i'm probably gonna i want some lunch so i'm gonna try and go and park it in either in the key thing because in the key thing railway station has a charging point that will accept this car um, so the plan is I can go charge the car a bit while I go and get some lunch because I need some lunch. And then uh, there's a few bits near here or a few bits on the way back I will film later, um, depending on what time it is, because it's probably going to be starting to get time to head back by the time I've had some lunch. But we'll see how things go. Off we doodles.